I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At seven minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight is a love story with Cicely Tyson as your host. Here's a preview. I think Ernie's finally gone to sleep. I'm glad. Being trapped in this elevator has done something to him. It's done something to us all. Yes, it's true. It's done something to us. But what made Ernie into what he is happened long ago. Not tonight in this elevator. You're as bad as Ernie. You're so bitter. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Lucille Ball, here to make a personal appeal to every American. Since the 1880s, the American Red Cross has been stepping in when there's been big trouble. Like a hurricane. But nobody has to tell you the Red Cross is there when a hurricane strikes. So let's talk about the other Red Cross, your neighborhood Red Cross. They teach kids to swim. That's good, Eddie. And they train about every lifeguard on every beach. it's possible to look into it. We can get in touch with the local chapter. They help veterans get on their feet. They help people relocate after fires. Are you comfortable? Okay, now relax. They collect and distribute blood. They give a hand to the older folks in your town and do scores of other jobs. It's running very nicely. It's easy to see why we've got to have Red Cross, and only you can keep Red Cross ready for the little emergencies in your neighborhood. And the big ones. Help keep Red Cross ready. This is Cicely Tyson. Most of the lights on most of the floors of this glass and steel monolith have gone out. It's late. The workday is over for nearly everyone in this building. Only three people remain. They stand together, silent, waiting for the elevator. Anna Kaufman, 62 years old, her mop and bucket at her feet, is the cleaning woman here. Nightly, she scrubs and dusts and empties the waste baskets and ashtrays. Ernie Matrano, is adjusting the belt of his ill-fitting dark blue security officer's uniform. He shifts from foot to foot, pushing the elevator button every few seconds, unable to stay still for very long. Bonnie Albers stares straight ahead, unaware of her companions, thinking of the subway ride home. She's rehearsing in her mind how she will make sure she hasn't been followed before she steps inside her apartment building. Bonnie lives alone, and she's frightened. She carries her fears with her always, and often works late at the office to avoid going home to the emptiness. And now it begins. Finally, these three silent people will speak. What floor? Nine, please. Ground. What's happened? We've stopped. I don't know. We're stuck. We're stuck in here. Just hold on. That's what this here alarm's for, you know. There's no one to hear. We're alone. Now, these three will speak as they never have before or ever will again. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Your hosts, Lorn Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson with stories about love and hate, and related things. Richard Whitmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Long Night. 
by Pamela Russell. Our stars, Naomi Stevens, Vic Perrin, and Jennifer Penny. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. This spring for women, the fashion place at Sears suggests these up-to-date separates. They're comfortably casual, yet dressy and light-hearted enough to go anywhere this spring. Margaret mixes Sears' textured blazer and the small collar striped shirt with trousers. While Wendy wears a shawl collar blouse and the slim-down dirndl skirt. Color coordinated, these great-looking separates will come together beautifully for you. Spring's mixable, matchable, up-to-date separates. Get them at most larger Sears retail stores. Convenience and security. The Sears Best Garage Door Opener is just that. Digital control lets you select your own key signal from 512 different transmitting codes. Sears Best Garage Door Opener has a vacation switch that'll lock out stray signals when you're away from home for long periods of time. Of course, when you're home, you won't have to get out of your car to open up that heavy door. Sears Best Garage Door Opener, featuring digital control, gives you convenience and helps you feel secure. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. When my brother was my age, being in style meant wearing old jeans and about a pound of dirt. But today, us guys are more sophisticated in our style. And that's why Sears has Style Works. A guy can pick up on the latest styles in jeans, tops, sweaters, and dress your clothes like vested suits. I can depend on the Style Works shop at Sears for just about everything to keep me looking great. And the prices? Pretty reasonable. My folks like that. Style Works. Today, style's all in one place. At most larger Sears retail stores. They stand in the unmoving elevator, these three. They've never before spoken, never before paid any particular attention to one another, probably never knew the others existed. Yet, here they are, locked together in a tiny room, a stalled elevator in an enormous dark office building. Everyone's gone home. There's no one, no one to hear us. There's got to be somebody. Hey! Hey, somebody! Anybody! We're stuck in here. Hey, can anybody hear me? Hey, hey, somebody! If they didn't hear the alarm, they won't hear you shouting. There is no one to hear. How do you know? How come you're so sure? You have a watch. What is the time? It's almost ten. Well, who else would be here on this floor on a Thursday night? Who else but people like you and me? People who clean and guard. Well, and what's she doing here, huh? What are you doing here? Well, there's always so much work in our office. Sometimes I stay late. Well, maybe there's somebody else around as hardworking as you, huh? Hey, hey, somebody! We're stuck in here. Hey! Isn't there something else you could do? Like what? I don't know. Fix it or something. <laughs> That's real good. That's real good thinking. I'm a security guard, not an elevator repairman, you know. What about that telephone? You got me calling myself. This is a direct line down to the security desk on the ground floor, which is where I ought to be right now. Couldn't you crawl up through the shaft? Oh, you've been watching too many movies. I ain't Spider-Man, you know. I just thought that there might be something else you could do. Something besides screaming and pounding. That's making me very nervous. I ain't exactly feeling serene myself. But tell you what, you get any more of them bright ideas, climbing shafts and stuff, you be sure and tell them to me, okay? So what are we supposed to do now? Wait. For what? For how long? <laughs> you got me. I think I'm just going to sit down and get comfortable. What you do is up to you. Could it be that this is one of those blackouts? No, we still got the lights. It's just this elevator that's stuck, that's all. And I had to get in it. It figures. Just my luck. My name is Anna Kaufman. Bonnie. Bonnie Albers. <laughs> what do you two think this is, a tea party or something? We may be here for many hours. It's good to know who we are with, yes? Right, anything you say. And what is your name? Matrano. And your given name? Ernie. 
You talk funny, lady. You talk like some of them Polacks I grew up with in the old neighborhood. Are you a Polak? Why do you ask? Because you talk funny. You ain't an American. Yes, I am. I'm an American citizen, Ernie. Ah, uh, not born here, you weren't. Don't tell me that. I know better. You're very quick, Ernie. Yes, a long time ago, I, I, I came from Poland. I was a Pole. Yeah, I knew it. You can't fool me. I was not trying to, Ernie. Have you been here in America a very long time, Mrs. Kaufman? Oh, please, call me Anna. Thirty-two years I've lived in America, more than half of my life. I've lived here all my life. You are proud, Ernie, to have been born in America? Yeah, I guess. My old man, he was the one who was proud. All his sons born in America. He used to say that. My mom told me. I don't remember much about him. Your father, he, he's dead? Yeah, he worked on the docks. He got killed on the docks. I was just a little kid when he died. And your mother? She's still around. You sure ask a lot of questions, lady. Anna, please call me Anna. Yeah, all right. You ask a lot of questions. How come? I'm sorry. I, I'm a little uneasy being here like this. I, I try to make it easier. That That's why I talk so much. I'm frightened too, Anna. And so quiet, so silent in your fear. You remind me of someone, Bonnie. Who? My daughter. Is she about my age? I'm 27. No, she would have been older than that now, had she lived. Oh, I'm sorry. Anna, why don't we sit down? I'm used to standing, but yes, it's a good idea. We'll sit down, Bonnie, and we'll talk. Oh, haven't you been talking enough already? I have a son, an all-American boy born in America, very like Ernie. I have not seen him in a long time. It's sad when families drift apart. My folks live in Oregon, my little sister and brother, mom and dad. It's been five years since I've been out there to see them. I miss them. My son has his own family now. He has no need of me. I, I'm his past, and like most Americans, he has a little time for the past. Oh, you're right there, lady. Forget the past. It's over and done with. Today, that's what matters. I am what I am now. I ain't what I used to be. Do you like who you are now, Ernie? Yeah, sure I do. And did you like who you used to be? I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Anna. Yeah, right. Anna, what was your daughter's name? Margit. Little Margit. Sweet child. She had eyes just the color of yours, Bonnie. I remember everything about her. Please, tell me about her. She was so good on the train. She never once cried. I held her in my arms and she looked up at me with her big dark eyes. She never cried. But she was so afraid. We were all afraid on that train. There were no windows, so we couldn't see where we were going. And none of us, not in our worst nightmares, could have imagined our destination. And finally, the train stopped. They opened the doors and they began shouting at us. And we all got out as quickly as we could. But some didn't move because... They died on the train, and outside, my young husband stood beside me, and I held Margie tightly. I thought, what is this place? What is this horrible place? Where was it? Where was it that that happened? It was Auschwitz. Do you know of it? Auschwitz, Bunny? No. It was one of them camps the Germans had during the war. A death camp, yes, where Jews and others were killed, gassed by the Nazis. You were in one of them? Yes. I was in Auschwitz for eight months. But your husband, your little girl. My husband had tuberculosis. He, he made no effort to conceal it from the Germans. They had doctors there. They separated the sick, and we thought that he'd be taken to a hospital. We didn't know that the sick died first in Auschwitz. The sick and the old, then the children. Oh, they couldn't work. They were of no use, so they were gassed. They marched my husband directly from the train to the chambers, and then they began taking the little ones. I tried to hide Margit. She was so small. I, I thought they wouldn't see her under my coat. But they did. They pulled her from me. Still, she didn't cry. As they led her away, she looked back at me. I can see her eyes now, even now. It's the last time I ever saw her. It's so hard to believe. How could anything like that have happened? 
That is it, Bonnie. That is why so many died. They could not, they would not believe that human beings were capable of doing the things that were being done to other human beings. It was so unreal, but it happened. Now, that's something I never could understand. Why so many of them just walked to the ovens? Why didn't they fight? You don't know, Ernie, and I can't tell you, and I can't make you see what we faced. But I also cannot listen while you condemn all those who died. You don't know, Ernie. And you can't, but you must not condemn. Well, it's like I say, it's the past, you know. There ain't no use crying over spilt milk. Spilt milk? You're talking about millions of lives. Little children, innocent babies, millions of them murdered. That's too bad it had to happen. I'm real sorry for them kids, but it's more than 30 years ago. They're dead. There's no saving them now, lady. My name is Anna, Anna Kaufman. You will not call me lady. You will not take my name from me and give me a number as they did. I am Anna Kaufman. Okay, okay. It's all right, Anna. It's all right now. Please don't cry. No, it's not all right, but I won't cry. I cried all of my tears many years ago. How did you get to America, Anna? I married an American soldier, the father of my son. Harold was a good man. He's gone now, too. He didn't understand either, Ernie. I was younger then. I I tried to explain it to him, but there's no explaining it. There's no true understanding of it if you didn't live it. But at least it can be remembered. And what good is that going to do? If it's remembered, then it can't happen again. Nothing like that could ever happen in America anyway. No good at all comes from remembering stuff like that. Do you know, Ernie, that I can still see the faces of the German guards at Auschwitz? They look just like Americans. It would have been easier if they'd been devils with horns and tails, but they were just men, some of them young boys. They wore uniforms and they followed orders. Well, you wore an army uniform once, too, didn't you, Ernie? Huh? Stop jiggling your keys. I asked you, weren't you in the army? The tattoo on the back of your hand, it says Vietnam. Were you in Vietnam, Ernie? Yeah, I did a tour of duty in Nam. What of it? You went? You fought in Vietnam? Was there anything wrong with that? I was 18 when I got drafted. Listen, I was proud to do my duty. I want to get out of here. Why did you do that? You know there's no one to hear it. I got to get out of here. You two are driving me nuts. A couple of weirdos talking all the time about dying and killing and stuff like that. What's the matter with you? Nobody's done anything to you. Yeah? Well, I don't like the way she looks at me. Anna's not bothering you. Oh, yes, she is. She thinks I did something. She thinks I killed group women and kids, don't you? Did you, Ernie? I never did nothing like that. I never did. I gotta get out of here. Somebody! Get me out of here! Somebody, anybody! I gotta get out of here! The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The power spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The power spray carpet cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Come, spin the wheel of fashion. Discover a fortune of spring separates at Sears Junior Bazaar. Ah, silk blend skirt and pants in dusty pastels. A blend of polyester, rayon, and silk, making them easy care, wrinkle resistant. Top them off with white on white polyester and cotton blouses. Fashion is your fate at Junior Bazaar. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. 
Can't believe you owe the IRS that much? Well, when things just don't add up, you can count on a Sears desk calculator to help you. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Then read the figures two different ways. 12-digit lighted display and tape printout for your records. There's a two-memory system that helps ease multi-step problems, plus its many extras make it a great time saver. Now at most Sears retail stores. Sears two-memory desk calculator. Cut $25, just $99.99 through March 10th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. The two women silently watch Ernie pound out his frustration. He stops finally and steers, eyes unblinking, seeing something in his memory, something ghastly. Ernie... Ernie! Don't. Don't touch me. Leave me alone, will you? But I can't, Ernie. We are all here together, remember? Yeah, I remember. How am I going to forget it? Maybe I can do something about it, though. Stop it. What do you think you're doing? You wanted a hero? Maybe I can loosen one of them panels and climb up through. I got to get out of here. You can't. You might as well forget it. There's no way out. We're trapped here. Stop it! Stop it, I said! Stop! All right. All right. Ain't working anyway. Nothing works for me. Me, a hero. Oh, that's pretty funny. What is the time now? Hmm? It's almost midnight. And when will someone come and find us? My shift's over at six. The guy that relieves me, Bascom, he's always late. One thing for sure, he won't know how to get us out of here. But he can get someone who will know. Oh, Bascom's as dumb as a lunch bucket, but yeah, he can probably find somebody. Maybe. Ernie, before, you were talking about when you were in the army. I don't want to talk about it. Why are you so rude? I ain't rude. I just mind my own business, and I expect other people to do the same. Anna, I'm sorry that I asked you about your daughter. I know how painful it must be for you to talk about it. No, no, Bonnie, it's good. It's not easy, but it helps me. It's good to know that someone listens, someone hears you. I know so little about those times. In school, they taught us dates and the names of battles and generals, but nothing about the camps and what people suffered in them. Some people want to believe that if they don't talk about something, then it never happened. They hope their silence will make it disappear. Do you believe, Anna, it could ever happen here? I believe it could happen anywhere, even here. Oh, come on. We ain't Nazis or whatever. Them Krauts, they was born knowing how to follow orders and stuff. They do what they're told. So some crazy guy like Hitler comes along and tells them to start killing people, and they do it. Well, we ain't Krauts here. We're Americans. Nothing like that could ever happen here. You're so sure of that, Ernie? Yes, I am. Perhaps it could not happen in America, but do you think that Americans are not capable of doing what the Germans did somewhere else? Not here, not home, in America, but in a place like Vietnam? I told you I didn't want to talk about Nam, about the army. I told you that. Why don't you just try and get some sleep, Ernie? We all should. We won't talk anymore. No, she wants to talk, don't you? Anna. She wants to hear all about Vietnam. She wants me to spill my guts, don't you, Anna? No, Ernie, you want to. You need to very badly. I don't need nothing or nobody. Yes, you do. We all do. Not me. Nobody never helped me. Nobody never gave me a break. My old man, he got croaked before I ever knew him. And my ma, all she ever did was yell at me like it was my fault or something. Well, I didn't want him to die and leave us. It wasn't my fault. I've been alone my whole life. And I like it like that. You hear me? I like to be alone. All right, we believe you. I don't believe that you like being alone, Ernie. Being lonely. I ain't lonely. Why don't you get off my back? What do you want from me anyway? I don't have any stories like yours to tell about people dying and getting killed, kids and people. I don't have any stories like that. No, not everyone has stories like mine, Ernie. I'm very happy they don't. Yeah? Well, I don't know. You hit me as a type that likes misery, sort of like my ma. You're too smart to be a cleaning lady. You could have done something else if you wanted to. Maybe you like being miserable, feeling sorry for yourself, wanting everybody else to feel sorry for you, too. That's not true. How do you know? Who are you defending? You don't know her. Neither do you. 
You're just so bitter, you can't see anything but bad. I've seen guys like you. I've worked in a veteran's hospital. Oh, yeah? Couple afternoons a week and Sundays maybe, I'll bet. Huh? Cute little volunteer do-gooder. Come for a few hours, make yourself feel real good about yourself, and then leave it all behind. You've seen guys like me, huh? Well, I've seen little girls like you. I was in one of them hospitals. Were you wounded, Ernie? <sighs> Always with the questions. No, I didn't get shot. I went nuts. I tried psycho. I was in the psycho ward. They didn't let little girls like you visit there. Not on afternoons, not on Sunday, not never. But I seen you. I seen you making nice with the respectable guys, the guys in wheelchairs or, or blind or with hooks for hands. I worked with the mental patients, too, Ernie. Oh, did you? I bet you really helped them a lot, too. Huh? I did what I could. Some of them guys were just playing at being nuts, you know? You ever run into any of them that was just playing at it? Yes. I bet you thought they was real smart, them guys that was playing crazy to get out of going over. Huh? No, I didn't think they were very smart. But I could understand why they did what they did. I wouldn't have wanted to go either. Yeah, but you didn't have to worry about it because you ain't a man. Sure is a broad's world. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I do. Oh, I tell you, I was glad to get out of that place. I'll be almost as glad when I get out of this here elevator. There was this one guy in the hospital, you know. He thought he was a snake. He'd hide under your bed, and if you didn't watch yourself when you got up in the morning, he'd bite your feet. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that sounds kind of funny, huh? Well, it sure wasn't funny at the time. No, I suppose not. Well, you suppose right. Come to think of it, though, it wasn't really any crazier in that hospital than it was in Nam. Nothing made any sense there, either. And those gooks, there was no figure in them. They all looked the same, they all dressed the same. Some old gook grandma be coming down the road and she'd reach into her old baggy coat and bring out a machine gun and you were dead. Grandma would run off into the jungle and he'd never find her. And there's Andy. Never knew what hit him. Lying in the road, bleeding like a stuck pig, dying. And for what? For what? I don't know. You and me both. Who was Andy? How'd you know about Andy? You just said his name. Who was he? Oh, uh, just the guy, a guy I knew. He died? Yeah. He was a friend of yours? I told you, he was a guy I knew. He was not your friend, Ernie? Why do you keep harping at me? I knew him, okay? Anna, I don't think Ernie wants to talk about it anymore. I never did, you know. I never did want to talk about it. It's water under the bridge. There ain't no use talking or thinking about it no more. It's over and done with. But you do think about it, don't you, Ernie? Anna, please. What do you want from me, huh? What do you want? I want to know about Andy. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about Andy. He was my buddy. He was the only friend I ever had. And I was walking right next to him when he bought it. One minute he was there and laughing, and the next minute he was down, dead. I should have gone after that old lady then, but all I could do was stand there and look at Andy. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I kept thinking he was going to get up and laugh and say it was all a joke. I couldn't believe it. Andy was dead. My buddy was dead. And then what happened? Well, what do you think happened? They shipped him home in a shiny box all wrapped up in a pretty flag. And you, they put you in the hospital then? No, that was later, after we went into that village. It was later, Ernie? No, no, it was then, right after Andy got it. I went kind of nutso for a while. They sent me back to the States to a hospital. No, Ernie, before you went home, before you went mad nuts, as you call it, before any of that... You went to a village, Ernie. What happened in that village? Nothing. Nothing happened. Ernie. Anna, please. Stop, please, Anna. Ernie. Anna. Ernie. Get me out of here. Get me out. Get me out of here. Don't shoot. Don't shoot her. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. They're just kids. Don't shoot. Don't, don't, don't. Ernie. <laughs> Ernie. <laughs> Sit down. It was just a crummy little place. Not fit for pigs, much less people. Word come down there was Viet Cong hidden there. And that they was operating out of this village. We went in to find him. I don't know how it started. All of a sudden, everybody was shooting. It was like, I don't know, like they got a taste of it or something. 
I didn't want to do it. But there was this old lady, and she was running, and her old coat was flopping around, and she looked just like the one that killed Andy. So, so I took aim, real careful, and I shot her. And she fell, and I ran over to her, and I shot her again. And again, and again, and again. And I don't know why I kept firing like that. I, I didn't want I didn't mean to. It was all a mistake. I didn't really want to kill that old lady. Yes, you did, Ernie. Anna! Now, don't you say that to me. Don't you ever say that to me. I'll kill you. You ever say that to me again, you hear me? I'll kill you. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. What if you went off to college and found that you were different from everyone else and everything was designed for them, not for you? Suppose you went to the library and all the books you needed were in Braille and you were the only one who couldn't read. You'd feel left out, wouldn't you? And what if you went to class and found that there were no chairs because all the other students rolled in with their own wheelchairs? Suppose one of your professors gave his lectures talking with his hands only his hands, and everyone understood sign language except you. You'd think it wasn't fair. Well, that's how handicapped people feel now when they go to college and find extra handicaps. But things are changing, and we have free information that can help. Write Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. A public service message on behalf of the United States Office of Education. There's a million stories in this city, and it's my job to see they have happy endings. I'm Sam Hart. I was working the warehouse district with Shorty and Kitten on a bleary-eyed 4 a.m. Wednesday. Walking down an alley, I could swear I was being followed. I turned a corner and waited. Nothing. As I moved on, I felt a sudden fullness, pressure in my chest. I felt nauseous. Somehow, I knew that the big one, heart attack, had caught up to me. Shorty! Shorty! Hart! Hart! It can't be. Kitten, call for help. I'm starting CPR. I'm gone already. Without Kitten and Shorty around the corner, I would have taken the deep six. You think it'll never happen to you, but I had it coming. I knew I had high blood pressure, but I wasn't taking my medicine. A lot of people don't. Contact your American Heart Association for information on heart attack and high blood pressure. They're fighting for your life. Cicely Tyson again. And here's the concluding act of The Long Night. I think Ernie's finally gone to sleep. I'm glad. Being trapped in this elevator has done something to him. It's done something to us all. Yes, it's true. It's done something to us. But what made Ernie into what he is happened long ago. Not tonight in this elevator. You're as bad as Ernie. You're so bitter. Can't you accept that what happened in Vietnam was a horrible mistake on Ernie's part? Can't you believe him when he says he didn't mean to do it? No, I can't believe or accept that. Has your whole world become a death camp? Do you think that everyone is cruel and evil and that we're all murderers? I don't believe that, Bonnie. Shall I tell you what I do believe? I'm not sure I want to hear it. I do. I ain't been sleeping. I've been listening and I want to hear what she says now. It's not true that my world is all in Auschwitz. Not anymore. There was a time when it was, but no longer. I believe that there is within the best of men, within all men, all human beings, the possibility of inhumanity, of evil. It is within us all. I saw it in Auschwitz. And Ernie has told us of it in a tiny village in a little country very far away. It was not a mistake that Ernie shot that woman. It was not a mistake. It was hatred and revenge. He meant to do it. He wanted to do it. Ernie knows that, and he knows that I'm not afraid to confront him. Don't you, Ernie? Yeah, I know it. The knowledge, the admission of the deed must come first. Then comes forgiveness. Have you ever been forgiven, Ernie? No, never. Nobody never forgave me because there ain't nobody who can. Yes, there is. I forgive you, Ernie. I know what you did, and I forgive you. Why should you? You, of all people. Who better than I? 
I'm a survivor. I lost everything and everyone that's dear to me. What good is a person like me, a survivor, but to remember and to forgive? Then life may go on. I know that some people think forgiveness is God's alone to give, but God seems so far away sometimes. Where was God in Auschwitz? He was in the survivors. That's where. Where was God in Vietnam? He was in the boys who were driven mad with guilt for what they'd done. You, Ernie, you too are a survivor of a holocaust. You must remember and you must give your forgiveness with mine. You must forgive yourself, Ernie, as I do. Thank you, Anna. Anna, I'm so sorry for what I said to you. I didn't understand. I know. I know. It's difficult for a girl like you to even imagine such horrors as death camps and massacres. And how could you know such things? How could you be expected to understand them? A girl like you. It might be easier for me than you realize. The summer that I turned 19, something happened to me. Something happened that I'll never forget. Yes, Bonnie. My parents thought that I was in California attending the summer session of my college. They thought that was why I wasn't coming home in June. And I wasn't lying to them, not in the beginning. I really was going to take some classes. I hadn't done very well my first year, nothing like I had in high school. In high school, I, I did everything. I was always involved in activities, straight-A student. But it didn't help. I still felt so alone and isolated. I put all my hopes into college. I thought it would be a kind of miracle. Finally, I'd be inside. I'd belong. But it didn't work out that way. What happened that summer? I'm trying to tell you. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I didn't think it would be this hard. Look, kid, maybe it just ain't the right time for you to talk. No, I have to. I want to tell you. Just before the summer session was to begin, I met this girl. You see, I lived in a dorm on campus. I used to eat all my meals there. But I'd heard some kids talking about a little health food restaurant a few blocks away. I decided to go there. That's where I met Monica. She was a waitress there. She was really friendly and nice to me. I think she talked to me more in just a few minutes than my roommate in the dorm had all year. She dressed a little strange. She wore her hair all wild, long and frizzy. But I didn't think very much about the way she looked. I was so happy to have a friend. She lived close by in a big old house with a lot of other kids. All I could think about it as we walked over there was that I hoped that they all liked me as much as Monica seemed to. On the front porch, a boy with a beard and no shirt sat and played a guitar. Huh. <sighs> Inside, there were old bare mattresses everywhere and murals on the walls. Painted sunrises and clouds and people floating through the clouds. Strange and beautiful pictures like I'd never seen before. Yeah, it sounds like one of them hippie pads. I didn't know what it was. It was all so different and strange. I guess I was pretty backward coming from Oregon. My hometown was such a little out-of-the-way place. We didn't know what a hippie was. Oh, sure, we saw the news on television, student riots, and people burning their draft cards. But that was television. It was hard for me to believe there really were people like that. Anyway, Monica and I sat on one of those mattresses and talked for hours. I should say I talked. Monica listened. Nobody had ever really listened to me before. Then this man came up and sat down between Monica and me. He had long hair and a mustache. But he looked different, older. There was something in his eyes. He just sat there and watched me. When he left, Monica turned to me and smiled. That was Larry, she said. And you're in if you want to be. I didn't have to ask what she meant. <sighs> I moved into the house that night. I didn't attend any classes that summer. This man you speak of, his name was Larry? Yes. And his last name? I didn't know it at first. Monica never mentioned it. Everyone just called him Larry, that was all. I didn't know his last name then. But you know it now, Bonnie. Yes, I know it. So, what's the big deal? What was his name, anyway? Who even cares? He was just some hippie creep. No. Larry was more than that. Much more. Not just a creep. 
Worse than that. And not a hippie. The hippies preach love, remember? Larry preached something very different. Anna knows, don't you, Anna? You know his name. Yes, I think that I do. Then why don't you say it? No, Bonnie. I think it's for you to say. Larry. Larry Jordan. Larry Jordan? He was the guy who... Murdered 12 people. He gave the orders to do it, and his orders were always obeyed. Believe me, I know. But you weren't... I mean, you didn't... Kill for him? No, I didn't. I left that house before anyone died, but I didn't leave it soon enough. I went home to Oregon. I didn't return to school that fall. And in December, just before Christmas, the stories of the murders began to break in the papers. At first, I couldn't believe it. But then I knew it was true. I never told my folks or anyone about that summer. Until now. But you never really did nothing. Nothing to blame yourself for. But I lived there with those people, those horrible people. I could be in prison right now like Monica is. Monica, who was always giggling and playing with her silver puzzle ring, in prison for stabbing three people to death. That could have been me. I could have stayed. You could have, but you did not. Still, I felt marked, spoiled by what had happened. I quit college. It was as if I felt I didn't deserve to go. I've allowed no one in my life... No one to love me because I didn't feel I had the right to be loved. It's not so, Bonnie. You deserve to be loved. You have the right to love. What Anna says is true, kid. Don't be so hard on yourself. Look at me. I forgive you. Thank you, Ernie. Anna. It's been a long night. What is the time now, Ernie? It's almost six. You think I should hit the alarm? I mean, you know, maybe my luck is changing. Maybe just this once, Bascom will be on time. A little early, even. Try and see, Ernie. Uh. Hey! Hey, somebody! Hey, anybody there? Uh, I guess maybe my luck hasn't changed all that much. Is somebody there? Somebody! Hey, in here! We're stuck in the elevator! Who is it? It's me, Matrano! Matrano, I've been looking all over for you! I got two ladies in here with me. We've been stuck all night. Don't sound like too bad an arrangement. <laughs> funny, real funny, Bascom. You think you could get us out of here? I right, just hold on, Matrano. I'll get down and see if I can get the building maintenance guys on the phone. Just hold on now. <laughs> Luck really has changed. I'll bet that's the first time Bascom's ever been early for work in his entire life. <laughs> All I wanted this whole night was to get out of here. <laughs> it's funny, now that we're going to, I almost don't want to. I feel very much as you do, Bonnie. Yeah, I guess I sort of do, too. Listen, if I was a little rough at times, you know, I'd... I'm sorry. You were fine, Ernie, just fine. I want to always remember this night and the both of you. We won't forget, will we? Tomorrow, or next week, or next year, we won't pass each other in the corridor and not speak, will we? No, this we will not forget. Nah, I won't forget the two of you. And I'll talk to you when I see you, but... One thing I ain't gonna do again in a hurry. What, Ernie? I ain't gonna climb into an elevator with you again, okay? <laughs> oh, that'll be Baskin from the security desk. He wouldn't climb ten flights of stairs if his grandmother was stuck in here. All right, Baskin, what's up? Well, I talked to the building maintenance guy. And? Well, they're gonna get here as soon as they can. The one guy told me they could probably take you out one by one through the shaft. Otherwise, it might be an hour or more before they could get the elevator running again. We'll wait. What are you, nuts? What do you mean you want to wait? We'll wait and go out together. Yes, yes, together. Uh, suit yourself. Together, huh? <laughs> Boy, there ain't no understanding some people. I can't 
can't believe they can do it for $19.99. Installed? The Illumini Sears Muzzler is only $19.99 installed. And listen to the Muzzler promise. Sears promises that the Muzzler will last as long as you own your American-made car. Or return it for refund or replacement free. And if Sears installed it, they'll install the new one free. Well, you can't beat that. I think it's fantastic. It's a great promise. The Muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, $0.99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. To look the height of fashion wherever I go requires many coats. But for home, I need only one coat fashion surrounding me. Sears Best Easy Living Interior Paint. One coat of easy living on the walls and every room looks stunning. While I entertain or just relax. Choose from 24 decorator colors in easy living flat latex and semi-gloss. Plus bright white ceiling paint for your home. Because with Sears Easy Living Paint, all you need is one coat. When used as directed at most Sears retail stores. Come, spin the wheel of fashion. Discover a fortune of spring separates at Sears Junior Bazaar. Ah, silk blend skirt and pants in dusty pastels. A blend of polyester, rayon, and silk, making them easy care, wrinkle resistant. Top them off with white on white polyester and cotton blouses. Fashion is your fate at Junior Bazaar. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Dear, today I found the bedroom suite of my dreams at a great price. That's a coincidence. I found one that has all the features. Well, mine has authentic country styling. So does mine. Does yours have a beautiful 26-step finish? Nothing but, and I get a choice of 13 different pieces. All built to last for a long time? Yes, with sturdy tongue and groove construction and dovetail jointed drawers. <gasps> Is yours Sears, Sears open, open Hearth, hearth bedroom, bedroom, bedroom furniture? furniture? Sears Open Hearth Bedroom Collection. Expert craftsmanship at a reasonable price. Select from 13 different pieces. Now at most Sears retail stores. You've been listening to Sears Radio Theater, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. The Long Night was written by Pamela Russell. Produced and directed by Fletcher Martin. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Naomi Stevens, Vic Perrin, and Jennifer Penny. Also heard was Jerry Hausner. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. What's your trivia specialty? Entertainment, sports, recent world history, or maybe potluck? Hi, I'm Bill St. James, and beginning Monday between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on my show and the William B. Williams Show, you'll get a chance to test your skills when we play the trivia game. To become eligible, just send a card to Trivia, WNEW, 565 Fifth Avenue, New York, 10017. Be sure to include your name, address, phone number, and the category you'd like to be trivial in. Entertainment, sports, recent in world history or potluck. If your card is selected, Willie or myself will ask you a trivia quickie. If your answer is correct, according to our sources, you'll win $10 and a shot at a Jim Lowe trivia toughie worth $100. And all contestants who play become eligible for a weekly drawing when we'll give away a complete AMFM stereo music system. The triviality starts Monday. So get your name, address, phone number, and trivia category in the mail to Trivia, WNEW, 565 Fifth Avenue, New York. It's fun! The price is right, and who knows, you might even learn something. foods, plants, and animal products you can't bring back to the U.S. You can't because they're prohibited. They're prohibited because even one of these foods, plants, or animal products might carry a disease or pest that could spread to our crops and gardens and animals with devastating results. You haven't been everywhere on the globe yet, but there's always tomorrow. And before you go again, write for the free booklet that explains the law. Even one can hurt. Write for Traveler's Tips.
Write to Traveler's Tips, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington, D.C., 20250. I'm lost and lonely, scared and sad, trembling at the thought of making you mad. My love is yours, but at times you're so cold. If life's like this, take me before I grow old. This song was written by a man now serving time in a state prison. Most of the men and women in prison today were abused children, and many abused children grow up to abuse their own children. Child abusers can be helped. Find out how. Write Prevent Child Abuse, Box 2866, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. Please stop the hurt. I've suffered since my birth. Join the abused child's fight. A message of the Ad Council and the National Committee for Prevention of Child Abuse. Tomorrow, the Sears Radio Theater is an adventure story with Richard Widmark as your host. Let's listen. Did you get that, Mr. McGuffey? McGuffey? Get what? I said the opium shipment will put in a Djibouti. Instead of Mombasa. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.